It's not actually every day that you get a view this beautiful from the car park itself. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, Ruben Dyer here from Stacked. Now, we've been to a couple of eco-friendly HGBs in the past. So we've been to SkyTerrace at Dawson, uh, Skyview at Dawson, and today we're actually at the pioneering eco-friendly HGB. Now, it's been on the market for a number of years now, so it's not the newest. And so there are some pros and cons to the HGB. Now, we'll talk about that in just a bit. This is Tree Lodge at Pongo. All right, so we're just atop the Keelong Bridge at My Waterway at Pongo now. It's a really warm day, you know, I'm drenched in sweat, but I'm really excited to show you the development, which is about three or four minutes behind us. Now you get a jogging track there, you get an entire garden inside, and even solar panels to boot. So really excited to check it out. Let's see what going green actually means. So I was just kind of walking along uh, the waterway on the way to the HTB flat and you know I just realized how there's so much construction going on right now. I remember in the past when I would walk here it would be clean, quiet. I guess that's just something that uh, residents of Pongo have to deal with. So we're literally here, I mean my waterway is just across the road. I think it was like what two minutes. So it was quite a climb but I think the good thing is that it shows that the development is elevated so the residents get a little bit of privacy in that sense. So not only is it elevated, you also get this shrubbery here which really not only adds privacy but it also helps to get a little bit of noise reduction to the residents here. This place has uh, featured cross ventilation so the blocks are facing northeast, southeast uh, and that just allows more wind to come in. It feels a lot cooler as well thanks to the greenery in the area. Right, so the first thing that you see when you get on top of this eco deck, I mean that's what it's called, is this massive, I wouldn't really call it an event space, it's more of an indoor space. Uh, now the reason why I couldn't, wouldn't call it an event space is because you don't have many power points in the area, so it feels more like a resting area as opposed to somewhere that you would maybe host events. Actually I just realised that there are power points here, and in fact you can see how well concealed it actually is. So that's always a good thing compared to most of the other developments that we see. You might notice a couple of balconies with green spaces so you get pots and plants and it's actually something that HDB prioritised really to encourage residents to contribute to that entire eco-friendliness greenery of the space. Another thing to note as well is that the east and west facing units actually have thermal insulation built into their walls just so that when the heat actually hits the unit during the day, it doesn't actually get that warm. If you just kind of look at the unit over there, uh, so really he should be prioritised this planter space to really encourage residents to contribute to the green facade of the area. So we're just walking under the trellis right now. As you can tell, it's not really sheltered, uh, not sheltered completely anyway. So in the event of rain, you do get your underground car park which is completely sheltered. Uh, on that note as well, I just want to bring your attention to the tones of this area. When you look at the facade, it's white and black. It doesn't really feel like a tree lodge. But once you come down, you see these earthly tones, you really begin to get that eco-friendly vibe. All right, so what's really interesting is this is actually HGB's first eco-friendly initiative. They were actually able to implement so many things together, one of which actually includes the solar panel roofs right at the top. Now, energy from that flows into the corridor, so it helps to light up bulbs. Uh, you get motion sensor lighting as well. On top of that, you have rainwater collection, so that feeds into irrigation and subsequently to wash corridors. I'm not sure if you can tell on the video, but it's actually pretty windy. And that is actually because of the way this place was designed. Now, I'll share more about that in just a bit. There are different ways that HGB has actually implemented this green initiative, one of which is actually this community garden right here. Now, not only is it a beautiful scene to the eyes, it also promotes community bonding amongst residents. So over here, you get the playground. As you can see, it's very colourful. It definitely adds a little bit of vibrancy to the development. What's really interesting is that it's actually kind of cordoned off. So you can see there's a fencing around and I think that helps to alleviate some parents' fears. And uh, just over here, you get a little bit of sitting as well. It's not sheltered, unfortunately, but it's just something that I guess parents will have to deal with. Another point to note as well is that this entire playground is made from recycled materials. I kid you not, literally everything here is recycled. We're actually at the back of Pongo View Primary. You can hear the kids playing around and it's always nice to hear kids laughing. But I think just on that note as well, for residents who are staying in this unit here, it's important to understand that during lunchtime, during after school hours, it's going to get a little noisy. So if you're working from home, uh, do take note about this down the road. The sun is actually really high up in the sky right now. And just walking along this trellis, it really gives you a nice visual. You see the shadows cast on the floor, really the glow just coming in. And it's really not that hot. Now one reason for this was actually because of the computational development in which they designed this area with. There's a lot of uh, airflow, it's very cross-ventilated. So it's just a very nice feeling overall. So we just got to the fitness corner, it was honestly quite a walk. And really the first thing that I noticed is how spacious it actually is. And on top of that, for a development of about 10 years, 
This really looks pretty brand new. <laughs> so you might think that this is honestly quite a bit. It's pretty expensive. There's so many different facilities. But there's just one other thing that I want to show you, which is just around the corner. Going green doesn't just involve the environment. You see, HGB believes that going green should also come through your lifestyle. As you can see, there's this massive jogging track that just wraps around the entire development. Something that, you know, residents, I believe, can enjoy uh, throughout the days when they come home from work. So on top of that, you also get a lot of excess paths around the area, which I feel is critical for a development of this size. Just over here, you get the Pungo MRT, which is about five minutes away, uh, walk away, and you get the entire waterway point as well. It's a massive mall. Uh, just a thing to note though, if you're living on that end, it's going to take about seven to eight minutes to get to the MRT. So we're finally done with the eco deck. We're on the way to the car park right now. But just before that, I kind of noticed this structure here. It really reminds me a little bit of Fort Canning in that sense where you get this arcing circular area. So this development has actually won so many eco-friendly awards and it's very clear here, you know, when you see this open air car park, uh, you get the sky, the blue sky, the greenery, and it just feels very well ventilated as opposed to a lot of car parks we've been in. Another thing to note as well is that you get a couple of bicycle lots. They really have emphasized that entire green commute vibe. They also implemented four green parking lots, which essentially is for electric cars. Here you also get two exits. So one actually goes down to Pongo Drive and the other to Pongo Place. It's not actually every day that you get a view this beautiful from the car park itself. All right, so there are a total of seven blocks here, uh, 16 stories. We're currently outside lift lobby of 306C. We're gonna show you what the lift looks like, the lobbies, and subsequently the corridors as well. Let's have a look. It's also very unique that the car park actually connects you directly to the lift lobby. And just on that note as well, if you look at the flooring, it looks really clean for a place of 10 years. Most of the time, uh, when I get to the lift lobby, the floors are usually very dirty. I just really want to bring you guys upstairs to have a look at the corridors um, and the views as well. And so another thing is why I'm wearing the lift right now, and uh, it just kind of brought a thought in my head. Now, this is a machine roomless lift. Essentially, that just saves a lot more energy. So I think you get a 10% cut on energy, which is always a good thing. Okay, so we finally got to the top. We're on the 16th floor now. So I just want to show you the number of units. Basically, you get a total of eight units per floor. You also get two lifts, which I believe should be ample for 16 different floors with eight units each. One thing I noticed about coming into the corridor is that you get, you know, quite a bit of air on both sides. The way it's actually fixed facilitates the ventilation. You don't get the best of views until you do, and this is what you see. You can just imagine the views that residents get over here. And actually, you get you do get views of uh, Waterway Terrace from here. Quite a bit of ocean views from this end. All right, so if you actually have a look at the corridor layout, uh, we're not really going to go very close, but you do notice that they're actually facing each other. So you don't get a shared common area of sorts, but you do get a privacy issue. So I've noticed that most of the doors here are closed to kind of facilitate the privacy. Just to add on to the point earlier on about the motion sensor lights, so this is where it is, and essentially it's powered by the solar panels, which is on the rooftop. All right, so just over here, you get the recycling slash rubbish chute area. Now, this is one of the very first few recycling chutes we've had in a HDB flat. And I think just on that note as well, it's very well secluded away from the unit, so you don't necessarily get the smells and the pests, which usually comes with the rubbish area. Now, despite HGB's best efforts, there were some issues uh, that came along with the HGB development. Now, one thing was they, they really tried their best to get as much sun into the surface area as possible, just to reduce the amount of electric, uh, electrical usage for like dryers and washers. But as you can see here, you know, your surface area doesn't really get that much sun. HGB actually implemented ferro cement in the walls so it's a different kind of cement, it's 20% less sand. But the downside to that is it's a little bit brittle. So when some people tried to put up their paintings or televisions, basically an entire chunk of the wall came out. So best of intentions, but perhaps not the best of execution. I'm not sure if you can kind of see the double storied unit over there. So it's not a mansionette, it's a, essentially a loft unit and you get 14 loft units in this development. So basically two lofts per building, total of 14. Now another point to note is for those of you guys looking for loft units, I believe that there are 23 other loft units at Pongo Sapphire. So be sure to check that out if you're interested in this area. I just want to show you one other thing. Because looking down there, it kind of feels like you really see how everything comes together. So you get the eco deck with the greenery, you get the trellis, you get the, the car park underneath, and obviously you see the jogging track in the distance over there. I feel like HGB have done a really good job here. They've really put everything together very nicely. 
All right, so that about wraps up our tour for today. Now you're probably wondering why on earth we're in the car park. We don't usually wrap up in the car park, but it's just so quiet, it's so serene. Considering that it's Singapore's very, one of the very first few uh, experimental eco-design HDBs, I feel like HDB has done a great job. Although, you know, there were some issues with maintenance down the road, but overall, I think it's a pretty good project. You do have the Pongo Digital District coming up in just, I believe, 2023, so just two years from now. That's about five minutes away from here, and that's going to bring over 30,000 jobs. It's, I think, 5 million square feet over in land size. And so this is going to be a very interesting timeline in Pongo's history. Amenities-wise, uh, we didn't actually cover it earlier, but we do have a Sing Song just around the corner. You do have a basketball court as well, in case you are a family, a young family with kids. The waterway is about five minutes walk away. Pongo Safra as well is about five minutes walk away. So plenty of amenities, very self-sustainable in that sense. Finally, uh, regarding unit mix, you do get your three rooms, four rooms and five rooms here. Uh, I think, I believe there are about 98 three rooms, 600 four rooms and just 14 uh, five room loft units. All right guys, well, thank you again for joining us today. Uh, if you like what you've seen, do feel free to leave a like, uh, subscribe and tell us your comments uh, below. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about Tree Lodge at Pongo, you can read our full review down in the description box or you can head on to stackedhomes.com editorial. Thank you so much for joining me. We'll see you guys in the next one.